Hi and welcome to Chandu.org. I am really happy to say hello to you from all the way in Wellington, New Zealand. That's right. Uh, recently, our family, myself and Joe and kids, we migrated to New Zealand. We wanted to spend a couple of years here uh, exploring all the beautiful sights and awesome things that uh, that can be done in in the land of long white cloud, as they call it. So I, right now I'm sitting in New Zealand Wellington and uh, of course I'm sitting in my hotel room which happens to be in one of the suburbs of the Wellington. Uh, but I just wanted to show you a very quick glimpse of uh, Wellington before we actually jump into the topic of the day which is forecasting in Excel 2016. So let me just turn the camera and uh, hopefully you can see something uh, that's the that's the window and probably you can see some moving clouds and uh, it's it's kind of getting dark now it's about 5 30 in the evening here so it's not very bright but uh, I'll probably attach some pictures or something uh, to the video so you can you can get a glimpse of uh, how beautiful and awesome this place really is and this is just a hotel in in the middle of uh, suburbs so um, you know today afternoon we went to lunch uh, uh, we went we packed our picnic lunch and we went to botanical gardens uh, in Wellington and uh, and it's it's just insanely beautiful I mean the view when we were having lunch we we could see the entire downtown Wellington and you know I just felt so fortunate and blessed to be able to experience all that um, and, and and enjoy it with my my kids and my wife so thank you now let's let's talk about Excel I mean this is um, this is why you're watching this video anyway um, how do we do forecasting in Excel uh, I have talked quite a bit about forecasting in Excel both on blog articles as well as uh, some of the courses we run so right now the focus point here is how do you do forecasting in Excel 2016 for this purpose I'm going to pick an example uh, problem this is emailed to me by one of our readers coincidentally in New Zealand and uh, so he happens to have uh, some sort of historical data for for one year and then he wants to forecast it for the next three months very simple very straightforward problem uh, you got some data the data has um, a little bit of ups, ups and downs if you if you wish let me so let's just say we we look at um, you know a line chart of the data you can see that there is a a spike and then the data continues and we want to forecast it this could be probably an exception um, you know like running a uh, a promotion that kind of caused a spike in sales or having a deadline that caused a spike in uh, production or you know one of those kind of one-off events but that's the usual annual trend with with a slow upwards movement uh, in the first few months and then a downward movement in the month of six then upward movement all the way up to month number nine and then going down and continuing that trend so if this is the way the data behaves how do you forecast it now in the traditional excel the excel 2013 10 or before versions we would have to come up with formulas that will tell us how this forecasting should go so we would have to uh, either uh, come up with a time series based forecasting or any other forecasting it could be a polynomial forecasting or whatever so we would have to first set up a forecasting model and then uh, based on the equations and, and coefficients and whatnot uh, forecast the data of course if the data is assumed to be linear you could use a simple linest or one of the linear estimation formulas but in case the data is more wavy patterns like this you are better off uh, doing a proper time series forecasting but in Excel 2016 what Microsoft has done is they have come up with an awesome new feature called as forecast your data all it all you have to do is select a sample of data so I'm going to select this much you know that's what we we have uh, if I select everything Excel is confusing 
itself and not giving a proper forecast so i'm going to just select the first row because each row contains one type of value and we need to do this forecasting multiple times so i'll select that and we go to data forecast sheet this is only available in excel 2016 so if you're running an earlier version of excel i highly recommend that you download either a free trial of excel 2016 or office 365 just so you could play with some of these new really powerful features okay so you click that it opens up a, a very interesting worksheet where it gives you how the forecasting is going to look like the forecast worksheet option is meant to be a visual uh, thing so what it does is it gives you a visualization of how the forecasting is going to look like this is the actual data and it gives you three types of forecast it gives you a a, a forecast a lower confidence forecast and an upper confidence bound so same data assuming you you want to forecast with 95 percent forecast or 60 percent forecast or whatever with confidence levels uh, you know that refers to the statistical concepts of how you do forecasting and any other testing assuming you you are at 95 percent for confidence you know what the values are going to look like so it will give you the forecast for those three months you also have additional options page i'll just move it out of the screen so you can see the options tab mm. and uh, and you can tell excel some of the additional details when you want to start the forecast and what are the confidence intervals that you're looking for mm. some of the range parameters and and stuff like that and once you're ready if you say create that's gonna just like magic insert a forecast worksheet for you it's a new worksheet it's nothing new here just a worksheet that is been pre-calculated and tabulated for you um, it contains a table with your original data and some calculations built into it along with a line chart depicting the forecasting now excuse me if you hear my kids screams or noises in the background that's because it's a it's not a very big hotel um, and, and the kids are in the adjacent room so they just they're just having some play time now and uh, and you can still hear them okay so we have our timeline numbers here the original data goes here the last month value is duplicated here and then the new values are computed by your forecasting model now the beauty of the forecast worksheet is there are formulas so this is your raw data from which Excel is calculating the forecast so it didn't calculate the values out of thin air there is a formula behind this and you can now customize the formula to come up with your own forecast data as well so the forecast formula forecast.ets uh, is, is a new formula introduced in 2016 and that one takes your month your existing values and timeline and some additional information about seasonality and data completion uh, right now we don't have any gaps in the data but should there be any gaps in your original data Excel can do an interpolation as well and fill up those numbers and Excel can auto detect any seasonality uh, that is exhibited by your original data and accordingly maintain such seasonality in, in, in forecast as well okay so that's what it does and it will give you those numbers and uh, this is your forecast this is a forecast with lower confidence threshold and a forecast with uh, upper confidence thresholds okay so the only difference would be some uh, some of the subtractions and additions going on here okay. so that's how the forecasting function works in Excel now if you're thinking oh this is all awesome Chendu but I have my data like this and I just care about the forecasting values there what would I do now in this case I would imagine the forecast dot ETS function with with that formula uh, that target date uh, since it's always going to be in row number two we will we will log the reference like that so it, it reads as m dollar two the original values are here okay these values will start from column a uh, so we would we would type them as dollar a3 and uh, and we can leave the endpoint to be dragging so it will become 
m3 and n3 and so on and so forth or you can uh, you can also log that reference okay and the timeline values are that range now that range is again depending on what you have mentioned here it will either be a full absolute reference or it could be a relative so you know mixed reference and we will mention one and one here and then press enter we'll get the value for that I'm going to copy and paste it here so we can, we will get the values for the corresponding items and then we will say actual forecast and um, select all of this oops up to that and insert a spark line into the actual location range okay and for forecast we will select these three and insert another spark line in the target there so we will get actual and forecast targets uh, what we need to do is we must select all of these and make sure they have the same axis otherwise you will uh, confuse so we will say um, same for all all spark lines so that there's no confusion with the with the with the axis and then same so both vertical uh, minimum and maximum axis values have been set to be same for this entire set of spark lines if you want you can change the color of this set of spark lines because they're forecast so you can uh, refer to them in red color or something like that so actually is that and forecast is this so this is a very very crude way to quickly get to the visualization if you want you can also uh, write some sort of an if function so that you can either show actual forecast or the 95 percent confidence interval forecasts um, by using an if function logic so if somewhere you will change the value to be true and then it'll show the forecast false and it'll show you the 95 percent confidence intervals so that kind of thing can also be done uh, and uh, if you have been following chandu.org for a while I assume you already know how to do that and if you don't know how to do that and then I would highly recommend that you spend some time um, going through our YouTube channel or reading some of the back pages on chandu.org where we got tons of articles explaining uh, this kind of logical building where you have two sets of calculations and on the fly you can determine which which calculation to be used for your charts so i hope you enjoy the forecasting in excel 2016 lesson this is a a very powerful feature very very easy to use and the formulas are additional bonus for us because uh, you can either use it along with your forecast worksheet or just on standalone basis and uh, uh, do so many cool things in your workbooks uh, and dashboards so that's all guys i hope you enjoyed this lesson uh, and once again saying hello and bye from bye from wellington and in case you are watching this from wellington new zealand and would like to say hello to me or or just meet up and and share a you know share some coffee or something like that um, you know drop me an email at chandu.d at gmail.com right now i'm still in hotel but we will be moving to uh, a, our, our rental house in, in another 10 days time so once we, we get settled there i'm happy to come and meet you and say hello to you thanks bye bye